Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for joining me again. Uh, in this video, we are gonna continue on with our kind of one-off single motor branch circuits. Some of these oddballs that are not maybe quite so linear as your standard motor circuits, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Y delta start motor and specifically the overloads, calculating the overload size for a Y delta start motor because it is a little bit different than the rest of the motor starters and motors branch circuits that we've looked at so far. So we'll take a look a little bit at kind of how everything works so that we can understand why we do things the way that we do. So let's get to it. So, as I said, we're going to take a look at the branch circuit requirements for a Y delta start motor. Specifically with a Y delta start branch circuit, the primary area of concern that we want to focus on is determining the size of those overload heaters in this particular application. That's what's going to change from this to a normal branch circuit calculation. There's going to be some slight variances when we go for the motor over currents as well, but for the most part everything is pretty straightforward as far as the rest of these branch circuits go. So let's dig in. Looking at our motor nameplate information, uh, we're looking at a continuous duty motor with a service factor of 1.2. It's a 208 volt three phase motor and class B totally enclosed non-ventilated, which is gonna have implications later when we do those motor supply conductors. So I'm just gonna highlight some sections here, but before I do, I'm gonna give us an FLA to work with. We're gonna say this is a 44 amp FLA motor. That way we don't have to go digging around in table 44 for that horsepower and FLA from table 44. I'm going to highlight some sections here. We're still going to focus on our branch circuit calculations just for practice. We're going to do those motor supply conductors as well. We'll take a look at those overcurrents, determining those overcurrents. And then the primary area of focus in this video, again, as I mentioned before, is going to be these overload heaters and sizing them appropriately with respect to the configuration or the layout that we see here. Um, where those overloads are located is of primary concern when it comes to a Y delta start motor. So, starting off with 28, 106, because it is a motor branch circuit and these are the branch circuit conductors, because it's a continuous duty motor, we're going to start with sub row 1, which tells me we're going to take our FLA of 44 amps times 1.25 to get our minimum ampacity of 55 amps. And we're going to put some termination temperatures. We're going to say 75 degrees in both our disconnect and our motor starter here so that when we go to table 2, we're going to utilize that 75 degree column based off the requirements of 4006, lowest termination temperature. Uh, we should see a number 6 for our branch circuit with an ampacity of 65 amps. So next thing we're going to go for is that motor supply conductor. So I'm just going to bring this up here. We'll say our motor supply conductors. We are still going to use 28106 sub rule 1 to determine that minimum ampacity. It's the same calculation as your branch circuit conductors, but it's good just to make sure we separate these two conductors. Uh, so we're going to go again, 44 amps times 1.25 gives me the same 55 amp minimum ampacity. Table 2. Now, this is important. This is the differentiation again between the motor supply conductor and the branch circuits. Because we have a motor supply circuit here that is anything other than a class A with 90 degree insulation, which is we have a class B here, I'm required to use the 75 degree column when selecting the size of my conductor based off the 75 degree column ampacity. So table 2, 75 degrees again. This is for different reasons. This is 28104 that requires that I use the 75 degrees here, whereas my number 6 up here this was 4006, lowest termination temperature that required I use 75 degrees there. So again, just a little bit of kind of clarification on that motor supply versus branch circuit. It's not specific to a Y delta start. It's just good to always revisit that fact. Um, so we end up with the same size conductor, essentially. We're looking at a number six with a 65 amp rated ampacity again from table two. No worries there. Our overcurrent device, our OC, what we're looking at here, Again, 
28-300 for those motor branch circuit overcurrent devices. Specifically, sub rule three says, let's go check out table 29 with all the relevant information. When we get there, we're gonna say that these are time delay fuses. Because they're time delay fuses at table 29, it tells me for a Y delta start motor, we have to pay attention to what's the FLA rating of the motor because ours, for example, is more than 30 amps. 30 amps or less, we're gonna use a different row, but for more than 30 amps, we're gonna select the 175%. Now I know it's the same whether it's more than 30 amps or 30 amps or less, but if you look further to the right on that table, you'll notice it starts to change whether it's a time delay or sorry, non-time delay or a breaker, you're gonna get different multiplying factors. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, so for 175%, we're gonna go 44 amps, again, as our, just our FLA of our motor, times 1.75 gives me a maximum calculated trip setting here of 77 amps. And what it tells me in 28300 is we cannot exceed that calculated value using the table 29 percentage. So at table 13, I'm gonna go down to select a 70 amp fuse for those time delay fuses. So everything up to this point so far is pretty much standard branch circuit with the exception of that overcurrent device using a different row, that's about it. Now the change comes in specifically when we're dealing with these Y delta start overloads. So I'm gonna get rid of some of the information on here so I've got some real estate to draw some pictures so we can kind of clarify some things. So what we wanna focus on is the configuration of where those overload heaters are located with respect to the windings of our motor. So generally what we're looking at is something like this. We have our overload heaters in series with the stator windings of our motor. And one of the things that we have to keep in mind with a Y delta star motor is it starts in a Y configuration. So basically we're utilizing this Y configuration so that it starts in a Y configuration with a lower starting current. And then after a certain amount of set time, it switches over to a delta configuration and then uses our delta contactor to engage that delta configuration. So when it's in delta, that's when it's the concern. The FLA that we're given, this 44 amps, that's our run, we'll call it our delta run current. Our FLA is our delta run current. But if we, again, pay attention to the windings, T1, T4, T2, T5, T3, and T6, and we take a look at how this delta motor would be configured, I'll just draw it out real quick. Poof, there it is. If we pay attention to how this would be connected in a delta configuration, we would connect up T1 and T6, T4 and T2, and T5 and T3, and then we bring our three line conductors off of there. Just like that. So, looking at that configuration, I'm gonna transfer that up to my little line diagram that I have up here. If I'm connecting T1 to T6, and I'm connecting T4 to T2, and I'm connecting T5 to T3, and then I bring my three line conductors in, line one, line two, and line three, what we're seeing coming into our circuit here, that FLA of 44 amps, that is again my delta run current. But if we pay attention, for example, at that T1 junction, I now have a division of that current. And what we know from that delta three phase theory is that phase current with respect to line current should be root three smaller. So what I'm gonna experience throughout that series connection of where my overload heater and my run winding is, or rather my motor winding, I'm gonna see 44 amps at about 57.7%. The reason I'm using a percentage here is because when we go to reference the code book, there's a specific note about that. So I know it's about root three smaller. It is exactly root three smaller than that 44 amps. So taking a look at 28306 sub rule two, it tells us that we're gonna use the applicable percentage on the nameplate to determine the maximum overload settings. In this case, 
my overloads are only ever going to see 57.7% of that rated FLA. So that's the first thing we have to do here. Before we ever go and size those overloads, I have to reduce that and find out what that phase current is. So we're going to look for 44 amps times 0.577 or divided by root 3 or divided by 1.732. All of these are going to give us the same answer. They're going to give me the current that that overload is going to see during that run delta configuration, which is the highest that it's ever going to be exposed to. So 44 times 0.577, we should see approximately 25.388 amps. Now, this is my starting point to determine the size of my overloads. This is where I'm now going to go back to 28306, sub rule 1, and I'm going to reference that service factor of 1.2, which tells me if it is 1.15 or greater, I'm going to take my 25.388 amps, and I'm going to multiply it by 1.25. What that's going to give me is the maximum trip setting of that overload heater. So if I could dial it up, I could take it all the way up to 31.75 amps. So again, these overload heaters, max 31.75 amps. And that takes into consideration that phase current that those are going to experience during the run of that motor when it's in delta. So hopefully this has helped. Again, just make sure you take it down to that phase current before you calculate those overloads. Everything else though you'll notice in our calculations we use that full value of FLA. It's just those overloads because of their configuration in that we'll call it the phase connection or in series with those motor run windings or those motor windings. As always feel free to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notification for future upcoming videos. We've still got some more that we're going to take a look at in the next upcoming weeks here so hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.